Good evening, guys. Hello. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. Thank you very much for joining today's class. Right. And just give me a quick moment here because Zoom is not, it's been misbehaving. Okay. Se ha portado super mal ayer y hoy. And you know what? Yesterday, do you remember that I have problems with the audio? Well, um, today in the morning, it didn't work. So what I did was to unplug everything, unplugged, you know, the different devices, uh, the mouse, uh, the extra monitor that I have here, uh, headsets, um, camera, etc. Until then, until then, it worked and I was able to, um, you know, work uh, well. But then today when I was trying to access, um, for some reason it didn't let me. Right, so I don't know what happened, but here I am, okay? And we're going to continue with today's class, right? So, well, guys, today is your session 15. How do you feel, guys? How do you feel that you're about to finish uh, one of the levels? Let me see. We feel uh, like when we are arriving to the to the cost. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, totally. I get you, right? So, and 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 in in your case, um, guys, or well, uh, you will you, um, did you uh, begin from level one, or did you just incorporate it into the different levels that we already have? I incorporated uh, in pre advanced one. Ah, okay. Totally get you. When I began working with you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or was it pre-advanced three, right? I think I was yeah. here with pre-advanced three. Okay, excellent. So let me open up here the um, the list. Give me one moment. By the way, guys, I would like to, um, to congratulate you for yesterday's class. I mean, I was able to see that most of you, right, we're providing good examples of the topic that we discussed. And I, I, I really liked that. I was very glad, you know, to know that there was a, a very good understanding on the matter. But anyways, if you have uh, questions, that's why I'm here, right? Mi, mi trabajo principal en este grupo es contestar sus preguntas. Así que cuando ustedes tengan preguntas, no duden en ningún momento en, 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 en traerlas acá a la clase, que con mucho gusto. I'll help you. One moment. The list, the attendance list is loading. Give me one second. Bye, guys. As you know, we have already finished the material, right? And uh, what, I, what I'm going to do today is that I'm going to have a review with you, okay? So the review that I'm going to have, it's going to be about simple past. I have noticed that there are some, um, uh, there, there are some mistakes that we are still, you know, um, making when, I, when it comes to simple past. So my objective today is to go over it in a very simple way, right? Um, and, and, and after that, if it is possible, we're going to have some time to um, to work on some exercises to put into practice what we are going to study, okay? Obviously, I know that this topic, you have already seen it before, right? But it's important that we review it again. Why, Marce? Well, because um, remember that the more we practice, the better we become at it, right? And that's that's the most important thing. Let me go ahead and read the attendance. Don't forget that tomorrow is our last day, right, of classes. So, Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Eh, give me one moment. Ahí está. No está Alba Dir, no, okay. Eh, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Present. 
Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you. Eh, dije Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía, ¿verdad? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Uh, Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present. Thank you. Francisco Antonio Sánchez Joven. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you. José Francisco Peña Peña. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. María Susena Ayala de Flores. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. <laughs> Nady Ibis Mendez Albeño. Ese fue Marvin, el que dijo present, perdón. Yes, ah, ok, thank you. And Nady Ibis Méndez Albeño. Present, teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Rosa María de Milagro Pérez de Paz. I'm here. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. And Zulma Beatriz Perez Galdames. I'm here, teacher. Thank you very much, everyone. Now let's go directly to the class. Let me just close all the things that I don't need from here. So. We won't have problems, bye. Okay, so I was saying that today we're going to have a quick review, right? Uh, we already covered, you know, the information from the book. There was just, I think, a reading about uh, dreams and also a to sleep or not to sleep. But though that, that reading was already in the uh, exercises uh, material that we have in the platform. So that's the reason why I won't cover it, right? So just let me open up here the presentation. Give me one moment. I'm going to close this one. And this one too. And here we have the presentation. All right, guys, let's begin. So this is going to be a quick review. We're going to begin with what and where, right? And after that, we're going to move with the rest of the verbs. Now, remember that when we have simple past, there are two things that we have to consider, okay? So I'm going to have my whiteboard here. Acuérdese que esto no está en la plataforma, es solo que ya se terminó el material y pues... Eh, es un review, es un repaso que yo les quiero dar sobre pasado, simple, ¿ok? Entonces, when we have simple past, right? We have simple past, right? Simple past with uh, verbi or verb of verbi, right? Mejor dejámoslo así, simple past for verbi. Y tenemos simple past, simple past with other verbs, ¿ok? So we have with the simple past, uh, uh, simple past with verb B, right? I already know that I only have two forms, right? I have was and I have where, okay? And with the rest of the verbs, it's different because with the rest of the verbs, I'm not talking about the verb B. I'm talking about all the rest of the verbs, you know, that need a different treatment. So how am I gonna do it? It will be like this, okay? Let's say for instance that I'm talking about the rest of the verbs. So when I move to simple past, I'm going to find two types of verbs. I'm going to find regular verbs, 
regular verbs. And I'm going to find irregular verbs, okay? Okay, so regular verbs, okay, well, we'll need to, fight to follow rules, right? We follow rules, okay? And for spelling and for pronunciation, okay? This is, this is important, guys, to know. Este es el mapa, es como la foto que les quiero presentar, okay? So with the regular verbs, we do not follow rules, we do not follow rules, but we memorize them, memorized uh, past forms, okay? And also we need to um, uh, know very well the list, right? So that is like the big picture, okay? So simple past with verb B, it's going to be with the two versions, was and where, if it's negative, wasn't and weren't, right? Yes, es todo. In presente simple, we have three. We have am or am not, is or isn't, aren't or aren't. But in simple past, we have only two forms, was, wasn't, were, and weren't, okay? Now, with the simple past, with the rest of the verbs, as I was saying before, if it's a regular verb, which are the ones that end in ed, right? If we have regular verbs, we know that we need to follow certain rules. And also, uh, those rules are going to be for spelling and for pronunciation, right? As you know, we have three different types of pronunciation when it comes to verbs ending in ed, right? Those that sound like t at the end, those that sounds like d at the end, and those that sounds with ed at the end, right? So that's important to know because um, generally we are taught that the verb needs to end in a certain letter to pronounce it that way. Pero la verdad es que cuando, cuando hablamos de pronunciación de estos verbos, no estamos hablando de en qué letra termina, sino en qué sonido termina. Es lo que determina cuál es el tipo de pronunciación que le vamos a dar. And then we have irregular verbs. But with irregular verbs, we have to memorize them. There's no other way to, uh, you know, to uh, handle that verb list of, of uh, simple past. We need to memorize them, right? Give me a second, guys. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I was saying, now let's take a look at the simple past form, okay? So it says last night, and now I know that you are in an advanced level, but un repaso a nadie le cae mal, okay? Así de que we have am, is for present, and am and is, those two versions become was in past. So I'm tired, where is Kate, and the weather is nice today. But what happened yesterday? Well, I was tired. Where was Kate yesterday? And the weather was nice last week, right? Look at the example that we have in the upper section, right? Robert is at work now. And at midnight last night, he wasn't at work. He was in bed. He was asleep, right? Now, with R, R, it's easier. It becomes where in past, right? You are late. They aren't there. You were late yesterday. They weren't here last Sunday. Okay, so we have the different versions of simple past. So we have also the affirmative and the negative form, right? In the affirmative form, I need my subject, right? And then I need my verb. After that, I will need a complement, right? So here we have the two sections divided, right? The ones that I use with was and the ones that I use with where. I was in class yesterday. He was uh, at the bank in the morning. Um, she was very sad in the afternoon. It was very late when I arrived at work. We were in the meeting. You were um, very angry because of the situation. They were uh, waiting. Oh, no, sería pas continuous. They were 
in the cafeteria uh, eating cake, for example. They were in the cafeteria. So what about the negative form? Now, in the negative form, again, we have the subject, right? But uh, the verb is going to be in the negative form. You can use the full form or you can use the short form. Contraction, was not, wasn't, right? Uh, the negative form, we, and then the verb, right? You, uh, they, were not or weren't, right? We have those two different sections. Now, last year, Rachel was 22. So she is 23 now. When I was a child, I was scared of dogs. We were hungry after the trip, but we weren't tired, right? The hotel was comfortable, but it wasn't expensive, okay? So as you can see, guys, parece bien básico, pero ¿en qué fallamos, eh, teacher? Nosotros fallamos en la persona, okay? Hay algo, chicos, que se llama así. Se llama... Subject verb agreement. Subject verb agreement. ¿Qué quiere decir eso? Que el sujeto tiene que hacer match con el verbo o con la forma verbal. Por ejemplo, yo no puedo decir they, uh, perdón, they was they was in the cafeteria eh, yesterday, right? I cannot mix subjects and verb forms that do not agree, right? So the, the subject, <clears throat> sorry, and the verb need to agree. Otherwise, we are not saying things grammatically correct, okay? That's something I hate about being a teacher because whenever you talk, all of a sudden something happens and then you cannot continue talking. Okay, so that's what the only thing, okay? Don't worry, that's the only thing. Now, subject verb agreement, as I was saying before, it's very important. And when we talk, we have to pay attention to the subject that we are using. So we are going to be including the right or the proper uh, uh, verb form, right? Now that you know that, let's go ahead and make um, I mean, create some examples, right? Where were these people at three yesterday afternoon? We have Dan, we have Jack and Kate, we had Sue, Mr. and Mrs. Hall, and we have Ben. So what about number one? What would be the correct sentence? Where was Dan yesterday at three in the afternoon? Volunteer? Don was sleep, sleep. Okay, Don was asleep or Don was in bed. Las dos oraciones están correctas, right? Don was asleep or Don was in bed. What about number two? Where were Jack and Kate yesterday at 3 p.m.? Another volunteer? We are in the cinema. We are? Are. But in yesterday, but what about Jack, yesterday? Uh -huh. Jack and, and Kay were in the cinema, or the yeah, place? cinema is it's a cinema. I'm sorry, cinema is como uh, the British version. Pero movies es the North American version. So, Jack and Kate were, porque estamos hablando de ayer, ¿verdad? Were at the movies, ¿ok? No le escuché a Zule, si ella me estaba diciendo where, no le entendí muy bien. Pero, sorry, Zule, si no le comprendí exacto como me había dicho, pero es Jack and Kate were at the movies, right? So, what about number three? Look at Sue. Where was Sue? at three yesterday afternoon. She was in the metro, metro okay. station. Okay, very good. She was at the train station in this case, right? She was at the train station or the subway station, right? Very good. 
uh, I think the subway is el, el, el metro. I think, I'm not pretty sure. So what about number four? Look at Mr. and Mrs. Hall. Where were Mr. and Mrs. Hall at 3 p.m. yesterday afternoon? They were at the restaurant. Exactly, right? So Mr. and Mrs. Hall, oh, they were in a restaurant. Very good. What about number five? Where was Ben at three yesterday afternoon? Ben was in the beach. Exactly. Ben was at the beach, right? ¿Por qué in a restaurant y por qué at the beach? Porque, remember, if I am in a room, si yo estoy en un espacio cerrado, I'm inside the place. Pero si yo estoy en, un, en una locación, en un, perdón, en una ubicación abierta, I am at that place. I am at the beach, right? But I am inside the restaurant. Okay, that's the reason why. So, for example, oh, dígame, Claudia, perdón, Marce, perdón. And, and how about movies that are in the cinema or the movies? But at the movies. Are, uh, at the movie, but they're inside a place. But exactly. In this case, said the preposition at. Why mm -hmm. in that case is that a reason? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that case, well, being honest with you, I'm going to look for it because as far as I know, it's a, a, a phrase already, but let me see. Mm, okay, look, there teacher, is something here. Huh? Teacher, maybe tomorrow we can practice the use uh, of at, on, or in. Prepositions. There are, there are, there are, there are, this preposition has rules, has different rules. Uses. At, uses, yes. Mm -hmm. Different uses. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because remember that in at on, we have them in two different versions. We have them as prepositions of time and we have them as prepositions of place, right? So we have two different topics there. So let me see. Uh, it says here, I like this explanation. It says American English. If you say that you someone or something in the movies, you are saying that you saw it in an specified motion picture, perhaps in several, but you are not describing going to a movie theater, like in the American English. So I used to watch Jennifer Aniston on TV, but I also seen her in the movies. That's a trick I would never done myself, but I've seen it in the movies. If you have definitely seen Miss Aniston, or the trick in only one movie, you could say in a movie, but you could have watched any of all these movies at home on DVD. To indicate the activity of watching a motion picture in a theater, you can say going to the movies. You can also say at the movies with a different version to describe this activity. Uh, my boss was out sick, so I spent the afternoon at the movies. On Saturday's afternoon, I usually go to the movies, right? Um, now, what I understand from here, Marce, is that significan dos cosas diferentes. So if you use in the movies, you are talking about inside the, uh, ¿cómo lo llama aquí? Uh, inside an specified motion picture. So if you, so if you, if you use the expression in the movie, right? singular, right? Or in the movies, in plural, you're talking about the movies and stuff, the films, right? But if you are talking about the activity, it says that we have two options. We have going to the movies or go to the movies or at the movies to describe the activity. Ajá, por eso le decía que yo recordaba que la expresión era así, 
but I didn't know the answer to the question. Pero al parecer si yo uso in the movies, estoy hablando de algo completamente diferente. Que está dentro de la película de la que estamos hablando. Algo así, no sé si me di a entender. Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. And so I can use at the movies or to the movies, there are any problem. So, and yeah. Thing. Uh -huh, okay. Because in that case, if I'm, but if I'm talking about the location, it would be better to use at the movies, right? Or I went to the movies yesterday. So Mr. and uh, Mrs. Hall went to the movies. Sería, ¿verdad? Or, uh, perdón, es Jack and Kate, ¿verdad? Jack and Kate went to the movies. Ahí. Or Jack and Kate were at the movies. So to express more like the location of the, uh -huh, uh, where they were at that specific time. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. I'm, I get you're it. welcome. Le voy a compartir aquí el, el link de lo que estaba leyendo. There you go. Okay, very good. And you, <laughs> right? Where were you guys? Yesterday at three, je I mean, where were you yesterday at three? Yes, no. Blah, 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 blah. Where were you at three yesterday afternoon? I'm sorry. I included yesterday like four times. Okay. So where were you guys? At three afternoon yesterday. In my case, I was finishing my class of the university online. Okay. Very good. Finishing your online class. Excellent. Wells. Uh, I was in my in my house. Okay, you were in your house. Very good. In my case, I was. I think. Well, I was doing something. Así que tendría que usar pasado continuo. I was driving home. Right? I was driving home yesterday at three p.m. in the afternoon. Okay, <laughs> and you was. Eli was at the beach, right? At the beach. Okay, really? Were you at the beach, Eliu? In Las Tunas, beach. <laughs> wow, but were you there uh, for pleasure or just doing some errands, running some errands, I'm sorry? Yes, if, uh, well, so pleasure um, giving attention to a, a sibling that is visiting me. Ah, okay. So, ah, I understand. So, ah, you took him there so he could have a good time. Okay, cool. Yes, yes. Okay. Sandra, you raised your hand. I'm sorry. In my case, I was working. <laughs> you were working. Yeah, that, that time is still, you know, it's, um, eh, ¿cómo que le llaman? Eh, business hours, horas laborales, ¿verdad? Así que, Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and complete the following exercise, okay? I'm going to give you a couple of minutes. Uh, no, tampoco. ¿verdad? You are advanced. So, uh, dice, quiero ver. Uh, dice Jose Carlos, I was walking in the park. Okay, very good. You went for a walk. Yeah, uh, I definitely recommend that. I should do it too. Yo también debería hacerlo. Actually, I don't go out that, that often. So uh, let's go ahead and set the timer, guys. I'm going to give you, what about uh, four minutes, okay? I think it's enough, and then we move to the next exercise. Y también si tienen suggestions, eh, Eluya me dio una sugerencia. He, wanted, uh, he wants to check very quickly on prepositions. Obviously, ¿verdad? Vamos a tener que escoger lo que se pueda porque no podemos hacerlos todos, pero si tienen alguna otra sugerencia, uh, uh, you can do that too. So you have four minutes, guys, beginning right now, y solo déjenme, me voy a levantar un momento para ir por agua, ok? So, but these four minutes are for you to complete the exercise, ok?
Thank you for waiting, guys. I've been drinking a lot of water because it's very hot over here. Okay, so if you finished because it's already time, let's go ahead and begin. So you can open your microphones and to make it faster, I'm going to just uh, read it for you, okay? So last year she what? Was. Okay. She was. Very good, she was. So she. Is. 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 Mm -hmm. Today the weather. Is. Is. But yesterday it. Was. Was. was very cool. I um, can I have something to eat? I feel fine this morning, but I was, I was. I was very tired uh, last night. Uh, my keys were here. Where? were here this morning. Where are they now? Don't buy those shoes. They are, 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 are. They. I are. like your new jacket. Thanks. It is. It is on sale. Mm. Was. Was. Porque ya se la está, ya la lleva puesta, ¿verdad? Entonces, um, this time last year, I was. was. Mm -hmm. Where are. Are. are Sam and Joey. I don't know. They where 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 a few minutes ago okay they were here now cuando yo hablo nosotros decimos hay hasta cabalito hoy hace un año dice uno entonces en inglés decimos this time last year this time last year right okay so uh, right was where or wasn't or weren't okay so let's go ahead and see um we weren't happy with the hotel our room What? Oh, it was. The room was very small and it. It is clean. Uh, it, was, it was clean. It wasn't, wasn't. right? It wasn't, it wasn't clean wasn't. because uh, it's very small, right? We weren't happy there. Nick. Was. Was, oops, sorry, was. wasn't at work last so, week because he was sick. Perdón, le di doble click. He's better now. Yesterday was was a holiday. So the bands were were close. Very good. Where? Number four. Where Kate? Where Kate and Bill at the party? Kate was who was there? Was there? Was. But Bill wasn't. Was wasn't. Uh, what are my keys? They they were on the table. Were on the table, but they're not there now. So you were wearing weren't very good home Where? last night. Y ahora pregunta. Where were you? Where were you? Okay. Very were good. You? Excellent. Mm -hmm. So that is about the um, the affirmative and negative form. But now let's go and talk a little bit about the regular forms, okay? Voy a dejar de compartir y me voy a pasar a compartir acá, okay? So eso es acerca del verb be. And obviously we have positive, negative, and question forms, okay? But what happens with the verb be, as I was saying before, we divide it into two different sections. And we have the regular verbs and we have the irregular verbs, right? Now, we have also the sequence of elements that we need, right? So they watched TV last every night. They watched TV last night. So we had the, 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 the same structure. And the good thing about regular verbs is that just by following you know, the rules, you will be able to convert the base form into the past form. Watched is the past simple, right? So what is the formula? Well, I need my subject, 
my verb, and my complement, right? The past simple is often ed, which indicates that it's a regular verb. So guys, whenever we have a verb ending, you know, in consonant, we are going to uh, go ahead and add ed. But obviously we have different rules. We have work, worked, clean, cleaned, start, started, dance, danced, stayed, stayed, need, needed. Now pay attention to that. Hay tres tipos de pronunciación dijimos, like in worked, worked, worked. There's a T at the end. Danced, danced, right? We have also cleaned, D at the end, cleaned. Y si ustedes se fijan, en los verbos que finalizan en T and en D, start, started, need, needed. Cuando yo agrego id, right, I add an extra syllable. O sea, yo le agrego una sílaba más a la pronunciación del verbo. Start, started, need, Needed. Y yo he puesto atención y escucho que la mayoría de nosotros le agregamos ed y le agregamos esa extra sílaba cuando lo estamos diciendo, cuando solo hay un escenario en el que yo agrego una extra sílaba al verbo en pasado y es solo cuando termina en t and en d. Start, started, need, needed. I brush my teeth every morning. This morning I brushed my teeth. No digo brush it, digo brushed my teeth. Tony worked in a bank for two, from 2005 to 2011. No digo work it, digo worked. Yesterday it rained all morning. It stopped at lunchtime. No digo rained, sino rained. No digo stopped, digo stopped. Right? We enjoyed the party last night. We danced a lot and talked to a lot of people. The party ended at midnight. Yo no digo enjoyed, digo enjoyed. No digo danced, digo danced. No digo talked, digo talked, right? Ended, ahí sí. Ahí si usted se fija, el caso aplica para que yo agregue una extra sílaba. Ended, right? Now let's continue. Add ed to most regular verbs, okay? So in this case, the general rule, it's going to be, if it's an irregular verb, it ends, you know, in, in, in consonant, add ed. But what happens? When the regular verbs end in e, just add d. Example, decide, decided, complete, completed, bake, baked, right? Obviously, right, uh, we are going to check on the pronunciation form once we convert the verb into the past form. Now, what happens when I have regular verbs ending in a stressed syllable with the final combination of consonant, vowel, consonant? We add an extra consonant and then we add ed. Examples, teacher? Stopped, stopped, plan, planned, controlled, controlled, right? So when I have regular verbs ending in stressed syllable, ¿verdad? Sí, la, la, eh, al finalizar ¿verdad? el verbo, al decirlo, tengo una sílaba estresada o una sílaba acentuada, Entonces, yo necesito doblar mi consonante. Teacher, ¿son varios ejemplos? ¿Es una li la larga lista? No, es bien cortita. Estos tres son eh, parte de ellos. Stopped and planned. Now, generally, guys, I divide this rule into two because we have consonant, vowel, consonants. Entonces, cuando yo tengo un verbo monosílabo que lleva la secuencia consonante, vocal, consonante, right, ahí es donde yo duplico y agrego ed. Pero a veces no son solo monosílabos. Por ejemplo, tengo control, tengo submit, creo yo, y tengo prefer. Esos son, pues, de dos sílabos. Dos sílabas, perdón. Entonces, all what I have to do is to find the stressed syllable. 
with the final combination. Si en la combinación final yo tengo consonant, vowel consonant, y esa es la sílaba que va acentuada, entonces yo duplico y agrego ET. Okay? Now, what happens with the rest? For verbs ending in consonant plus Y, we need to change the Y for I, and then we add ED. Example, tried, tried, study, studied, copy, copied, right? So in that case, we are going to be able to convert the verb into the past form, right? Now, be careful here because if, if, the, if the verb ends in Y, but it is preceded by a vowel, so it, it is not applicable. It needs to be followed, I mean, preceded by a consonant, okay? And now that we have, have it, had a quick review, y si quieren, pues se los paso ahí a WhatsApp. I'm going to share with you this material. Give me a second. Está cargando. Ya se lo voy a pasar aquí a WhatsApp. So let's go ahead and uh, complete the um, the exercise. Let's do it together so we can make it quicker, right? So number one, complete the sentence, right? I blah 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 my teeth three times yesterday. What would be the verb here, and how would you spell it? Brush. Okay, very good. That would be brushed, brushed. Okay, number two, I was hot. It was hot in the room, so I'd. Open it. Mm -hmm. Open it or opened? Opened, right? We opened the window. Right, with D sound. The movie was very long, so it. Started. Very Start. good, started. And. Ended. Ended, right, at 10 a.m. So, ahí es donde agrego la sílaba extra, si termina en T or D. Very good. Uh, when I was a child, I'd. One, one, wanted. Wanted, right? I wanted to be a doctor. The accident happened. Very good. Happened, right? The accident happened last Sunday afternoon. The weather is nice today, but yesterday it. Rain it. Rain it or rained? Rain. Rained. Rained. Okay, very good. Rained all day. Y ahí aprovecho. Y eso hay que recordarlo siempre, ¿verdad? Si el verbo termina en un sonido consonante y lo que viene es un sonido vocal, entonces ahí uno, ¿verdad? The weather uh, is nice today, but yesterday it rained all day. It rained all day. Right, so I incluso me ayuda a darle el, el differentiation. It rained all day, right? Uh, the movie was very long. It started at 7.15 and it ended at 10, right? So, uno, allí, verdad? There's a link in section there. Number seven, we, we what? Enjoyed. Enjoyed, very good, our vacation last year's. And then we, Stayed. Stayed at a very nice place. Anna's grandfather. Died. Died. Very good. Died. Died when he was 90 years old. Okay. Very good. Recordemos, chicos. Solo digo, solo pronuncio la sílaba extra y di al final cuando el verbo termina en T o en D. T or D, como en el ejemplo 3. De ahí, no. 
No, ¿verdad? Para nada. O es D sound o es T sound, ¿ok? Y creo que se los compartí en el módulo anterior, el video. Pero si no, se los puedo volver a compartir, no hay problema. Dígame, Liu. En el número 2, open no debería llegar doble N. Opened. Opened. Ok, ¿cuál es la regla para que, que se tendría que cumplir para que lleve doble N? Consonante, vowel más consonante. Uh -huh. Pero, ¿cuál es el otro requisito? Que terminen en, en N. En, mm. en... No, no tenemos ninguno que termine en N. Look. Sí, sí. Open. Plan planner. Plan planner. Sí. Plan, plan, Pero planner. la razón por la que estos están, están duplicados no es en sí por consonant vowel consonant, sino que tiene que cumplir con la primer, con el primer requisito y es que for regular verbs ending in a stressed syllable with the final combination consonant vowel consonant, we need to add an extra consonant. Entonces, para que se cumpla la regla, primero debo de encontrar cuál es la, la sílaba acentuada. Y si la sílaba acentuada es la última sílaba cuya combinación es consonante vocal consonante, entonces ahí duplico. Now, in this verb, in the verb Opened, opened, ¿a dónde está el, el stress? Oh. oh, está al principio, oh. no, en, en, no, en, no al final. Entonces, a pesar que al final tengo la combinación consonante-vocal-consonante, pero como no va acentuada, no puedo duplicar porque no lo necesita. En realidad, chicos, si nosotros revisamos la regla very closely, la duplicación de esa consonante se da porque yo necesito duplicarla para poder pronunciarla correctamente. Entonces, si yo no tengo una sílaba acentuada al final, y, y a pesar de que tenga la combinación consonante-vocal-consonante, pero si no va acentuada, no necesito duplicarla porque va a ser más fácil decirla, ¿verdad? So, the rule only, eh, it's only applicable if that syllable is stressed. Y no solo son monosílabos, ¿verdad? Pueden ser monosílabos o generalmente son verbos que tienen dos sílabas, como submit, submitted, y ahí duplico, ¿verdad? Plan, monosílabo, planned, duplico, ¿verdad? Entonces, si va acentuado, ahí es donde yo duplico. ¿Ok? I understood, yes. Ok, Very open, open. Very good. The intonation is in O, oh, O, oh, open. Yes, open. I understand. I got it. Yeah, Excellent. No, and, and actually, guys, uh, I mean, for, for simple past, there are two important things. Number one, uh, to know the rules and to know the irregular verbs by heart. And number two, to handle the information about the pronunciation, right? So that is going to help us to, you know, say the verbs in the best way possible. Now, whenever we talk, whenever we, you know, uh, use English for our work, And if we have interaction with a native speaker, right? The native speaker, the very first thing that they will notice is the pronunciation of simple past. Okay, they pay close attention to that for some reason, right? So because for them, it is difficult to understand uh, that we have, you know, a very hard time saying those, uh, those particular verbs in simple past. Obviously for them, it's very easy, but not for us, right? So now for the negative forms, right, we use student. And I will tell you this, what I love about simple past is that you don't have to complicate yourself. It's not like in simple present, that in simple present, you need to pay close attention to the subject. Y ese es otro que quería tocar porque sí he escuchado también. Eh, en vez de decir, I, I mean, she doesn't, Right, she doesn't live in San Salvador. We say she don't live in San Salvador. Incorrect. Or a veces decimos, I, I not live in San Salvador. Incorrect, right? I don't live in San Salvador. She doesn't live in San Salvador, right? So in that case, it's very important to remember that with simple past, I don't have to worry about, you know, the, 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 the subject pronoun. I mean, it's didn't for I, you, he, she, it, singular forms, it, uh, plural forms, etc. It's the same. And what else? Que más me encanta el simple past? That whenever we use the verbs, you don't have to worry about the negative form and the question form. Why? Because didn't 
carries the message or did. Quien lleva el mensaje es didn't. And it's letting the other person know that my sentence is in past and that it's negative. And did carries the message that I am asking a question, right? So the only thing that I need to pay attention to is that if I am using the affirmative form, the affirmative sentences, that I am pronouncing the word the proper way. So the person understands that I am talking about the past. So examples, I played tennis yesterday. I didn't play golf. My dad watched the news last night. He didn't watch the soap opera. We worked last Saturday. We didn't work on Sunday, right? They studied for the midterm. They didn't study for the final test. So just by adding that didn't particle to the sentence, I don't need to modify the verb next to it. Why? Because I know that didn't is doing its job, right? And it's just converting the sentence into the simple past. Uh, yes, Rafael. Teacher, uh, what's the meaning of soap opera? Soap opera, that it's novela in Spanish. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, sound funny. Yeah, it sounds funny, so popular. Estaba leyendo el mensaje de Marcel. Teacher, about those cases, the order of the such of auxiliary per can be increased. Usted está hablando de conversion. Eh, yeah, I understand that. Uh -huh. Sí, solo que I don't know if I should go ahead. No sé si debería adelantarme. Eh, but yeah, why not? Eh, por cierto, ese tema que, que propone Marce eh, quizás es uno de los más, eh, en, mi, en, la, en la experiencia, la corta experiencia que tengo, porque casi nadie lo, lo, lo incluye en los programas, conversion. Y cuando se incluye es un poco confuso, pero sí podemos rapidito dar como un glimpse, Marce. Ok, lo está, lo está viendo usted en otro tema. I did a test. And that was one of the questions. And I understand, I didn't understand that. Típico, típico, Marce. Whenever, we, yeah, and, and, y, y siempre los estudiantes se dan cuenta hasta que hacen un examen. See, conversion, it's very interesting. It's not that common, pero sí se usa. Sí se usa. And you can find it in books. You can find it um, in literature, right, a lot. Or, you know, probably... Uh, Uh, gente ya que habla, pues, tipo, como les decía aquel día, Jordan Peterson, ¿verdad? People that um, write books, etc., give lectures. Entonces, but yes, we can mention that, pero lo voy a anotar porque si no se me olvida. Creo que tengo un material por ahí acerca de conversion. Tomorrow is the 23rd, right? So... You say conversion, right? Ajá. Es que es como, ajá, es, es inversion, perdón, inversion. Okay, inversion. Thanks. Ajá, uh -huh. inversion porque es invertir. Uh -huh. Conversion, le digo yo. Inversion, perdón, Marce. Ya estoy confundiendo. Eh, inversion, sí. Ese es. Entonces, solo tengo anotado inversion y prep. This on, at, in, on, for tomorrow. <coughs> Let me see if I can um, share with you something before. Vamos a ver si encontramos algo. Y así ustedes también lo pueden revisar, right? Uh, give me a second. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Ok, aquí tengo un, 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 um, un PDF, me acabo de encontrar, Marce. I'm going to share it, lo voy a compartir ahí en el, en el, en el WhatsApp group. Y just así como rápido, you can scan the info y pues mañana solo vengo y más o menos les, les explico eh, cómo se usa. Aquí se lo voy a agregar. Why? It doesn't let me to add it here. 
wait a minute. It's the inversion. It gives you like an explanation, right? And tomorrow we can talk a little bit more. Creo que por ahí hay un material acerca de inversion and emphasis. Okay. Pero sí, Marce, it's, I mean, uh, you're totally right. Inversion, it's a, a topic siempre, siempre lo va a encontrar eh, en un examen que es que probablemente le indique el nivel que usted tiene, etc. ¿Verdad? And um, you have, eh, es un poco confuso because uh, the order is different to what we are used to, right? Aquí hay otro, fíjese. There's another material, just in case if you wanna check it out. Expressing emphasis and inversion. But eso es también. Uh, grammar. Let's see this one. Que hay otro. Y, y ese también que me encontré aquí. Bye. Ahí, ahí se están cargando, ¿verdad? Y you can check them later. Ok. So, well, uh, time's up, uh, guys. I'm Thank sorry. You. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. and, and I just couldn't finish, you know, the, um, the material. But uh, what I wanted to emphasize, creo que quizás aquí la moraleja, ¿verdad? Eh, no agreguemos ed a todos los verbos, ¿verdad? Regulares especialmente cuando los pronunciamos, ¿ok? There is a video that it's, no sé si con ustedes, a ustedes se los compartí, o no sé si fue otro grupo, pero yo tengo my, my, my uh, favorite video, right? To teach, because this is something that I cannot, you know, directly teach, right? Because I'm not a native speaker, but there's a video. Give me a minute uh, which is my favorite of all time let me see if i can find it creo que es este si sí, este es give me a moment see sí, this video that i'm sharing right now it's going to explain very well how we used in the um how we pronounce i'm sorry verbs in simple past ese es el que yo uso en cualquier clase que tengo de simple past right eh, obvio aquí no se puede porque el video pues es de otro canal verdad pero ahí lo tienen escúchelo pay attention y con lo que empieza ella y es una explicación bien realista es los, bueno, las personas, los native speakers, lo pueden pronunciarlo, pero ni siquiera ellos saben por qué. Y ahí ella explica el por qué nosotros los pronunciamos tal cual son. ¿Y cuál es la razón, teacher? ¿Por qué tenemos tres pronunciaciones diferentes con ED? Porque nosotros tenemos, vo I mean, porque ellos tienen voiceless sounds y tienen voiced sounds. ¿Qué es un voiced sound, teacher? It's whenever you say you emit a sound and you put your hand on your throat like this, over your throat. And when you pronounce that sound or where you produce that sound, it vibrates here. But we have voiceless sounds. Voiceless sounds is whenever you put your um, hand on your throat and you produce that sound and there's no vibration. So that is the reason why we had different pronunciations uh, when it comes to simple past. Por, la, por los sonidos, por los sonoros y los, y los que no son sonoros, ¿verdad? Entonces, watch the video, you will learn a little bit more about it. So, I'm going to stop here, guys, because of the time, but let me just pass the attendance and I will let you go. Eh, Alba Dir Portal Díaz.
eh, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Here. Thank you. Ana Francisca García Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you. Claudia Marcela Linares Surquilla. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you. José Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Present. Thank you. José Francisco Peña Peña. Here. Thank you. José Isaías Portillo Ramos. José, Present teacher. Ahí está. José Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present. Thank you. María Susana Ayala de Flores. María Susana. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you. Nady Ibis Méndez Alveño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you. Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you. Roberto. No. Ya le estoy cambiando el nombre a Rodrigo. Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Rodrigo, no, Rosa María de Milagro Pérez de Paz. Ahí está, thank you. I'm here. Gracias, Rosa María. Eh, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene León López. Present. Thank you, Enzulma Beatriz Pérez Galdames. Present. Thank you, y thank you, María Susana. Ahorita le incluyo. Ahí está. Gracias. Okay, so thank you very much for joining, guys. Have a wonderful evening and let's meet tomorrow. Don't forget that tomorrow is your last class. Okay, so thank you for joining. Good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.